Hey, welcome to EPN. My name is Victor Lucas, and we bring you the latest in everything cool every single day. This one's going out to Super Fat Bastard 69. Uh, he says, Nice Iron Giant shirt. Love that movie. Well, this rundown is dedicated to you, Super Fat Bastard 69. Death Stranding won't leave players stranded all by themselves. Last night at the massive Tokyo Game Show, Metal Gear Solid creator Hideo Kojima revealed new details about his mysterious new project, Death Stranding. He says it will be an action game with an open world similar to Metal Gear Solid 5 with the same kind of emphasis on complicated storytelling that we've seen in his previous games. Kojima also hints that Death Stranding will have some kind of online co-op or multiplayer, saying that he wants to find new ways for players to interact with each other that doesn't just involve them fighting each other like most games. Sounds interesting, but that's about all we know for now. Since Death Stranding was just announced a few months ago, don't expect to be playing it anytime soon. The number of maps in the next Call of Duty game won't be infinite. Infinite Warfare will launch with 12 multiplayer maps. That's according to multiplayer director Jordan Hirsch, who tells PlayStation Lifestyle that they're planning to include 12 maps for everyone, plus an additional map for those who pre-order the game. That's pretty standard for the series and is the same number of maps that came with the previous game, Black Ops 3. Keep in mind that Infinite Warfare is still a few months away, so the final number of maps might change. We recently spoke with lead multiplayer designer Joe Seacott, where we discussed the new features, modes, and weapons in the game's multiplayer. You can watch that by clicking the link on your screen or in the description below. Call of Duty Infinite Warfare will deploy on November 4th. Shovel Knight is getting loads of new content next year. Can you dig it? Developer Yacht Club Games has revealed that the next expansion for the retro side-scroller will arrive in spring 2017. Titled Spectre of Torment, it will give players a new story campaign where they get to play as the ghost-like Spectre Knight, who was one of the bosses from the original game. He'll have his own set of moves, weapons, and magic abilities, which should help distinguish the gameplay from the original Shovel Knight. This isn't the first time the developers have done this. The first expansion, Plague of Shadows, gave fans the ability to play the first boss, the Plague Knight. Expect to find out more about Spectre of Torment before the expansion arrives. Yacht Club Games is also working on a third expansion that will focus on another boss, the pompous King Knight, but they haven't named a release window for that. The Cartoon Network won't be staying regular much longer. The popular animated series Regular Show is coming to an end. Today has been brutal. The upcoming eighth season will be its last, meaning that the final episode should air sometime in the first half of 2017. This is a big disappointment for fans, but the good news is that since the writers know the end is coming, they'll be able to bring the show to a fitting conclusion. Creator J.G. Quintel says that they plan to wrap things up in a big way, and he's proud of all the stories that they've been able to tell. The eighth and final season of Regular Show will begin on September 26th. Whoa! Speaking of animation, Pokemon fans have yet another cool thing to catch. The Pokemon Company has announced Pokemon Generations, an all-new online animated series based on the franchise. It will use the familiar Japanese anime style, and the thing that sets it apart is that it will explore every generation of the franchise, revisiting characters and locations from all the games. Pokemon Generations will consist of short episodes that will be about five minutes each, with the first one slated to debut this Friday. This comes during a busy time for the franchise. Hollywood is preparing to make a big screen live action Pokemon movie following the success of Pokemon Go. The more traditional game, Pokemon Sun and Moon, will hit the 3DS this November. The Flash might sound a little familiar in the new game Injustice 2. According to IMDb, the Flash TV star Grant Gustin will reprise his role as the fast-running hero in the new DC fighting game. At the time we're filming this, no official announcements about his involvement have been made by developer NetherRealm Studios, so the IMDb listing might be in error. It's also unclear if Gustin will voice the Flash for the entire game or just in DLC. The last Injustice game featured Arrow star Stephen Amell as a rare DLC fighter, so they might be doing the same thing with the Flash. It's worth pointing out that in the last Injustice game, The Flash was voiced by actor Neil McDonough, who coincidentally plays the DC villain Damian Dark on Arrow. We'll have plenty more on Injustice 2 before it arrives next year. In other DC superhero news, a lot of people want Robin to appear in the new DC movie universe. Actor and martial arts expert Ryan Potter, who voiced Hiro Hamada in Big Hero 6, has posted a concept video showing off how he would bring Batman's sidekick Robin to life. Specifically, he wants to play the Tim Drake version of the character, ending his pitch video by saying that Batman needs a Robin. 
The video has already gone viral, showing that plenty of people agree with him, but the producers at DC and Warner Brothers have yet to respond. Batman vs. Superman and Suicide Squad both make reference to Robin, explicitly stating that he was killed by the Joker and Harley Quinn before the movies take place. We're bad guys. It's what we do. Still, as any comic fan will point out, there have been several different versions of Robin over the years, so it's always possible for Tim Drake or another version of the character to come into the picture. The next DC Universe movie, Wonder Woman, arrives next summer. As it turns out, a lot of people don't like the new DC movies. Go figure. Using data gathered from multiple social media sites, Medium.com has comprised a list of the 30 most polarizing movies of the 21st century. Batman vs. Superman and Suicide Squad are both in the top 10, which doesn't surprise us given some of the comments we've received in our reviews. Really, really bad. More surprisingly, acclaimed movies like Birdman and Terrence Malick's The Tree of Life are also on the list, probably because critics like them but general audiences don't. This year's controversial Ghostbusters remake landed the number two spot, and as for the number one most polarizing movie of the century, that honor goes to Tommy Wiseau's 2003 masterpiece, The Room. Oh, hi, Mark. This actually makes a lot of sense. The movie is so bad, it's good, which means people simultaneously love and hate it. <laughs> what a story, Mark. Yeah, you can say that again. Follow the link below this video to see the complete list of the most polarizing movies and feel free to comment below and tell us how wrong we are about Batman vs Superman. And that wraps us up for today everybody. Thanks for watching. We'll see you tomorrow with a brand new one. Hi. Can I help you? Yeah, can I have a dozen red roses please? Oh hi Johnny, I didn't know it was you. Here you go. That's me. How much is it? It'll be $18. Here you go, keep the change. Hi doggy. You're my favorite customer. Thanks a lot, bye. Hey, thanks for checking out that video on our EPN channel. It's just one small part of the things that we make around here. So if you liked it, don't forget to check out some of our other vids and hit that subscribe button.